All right, here we go. We have resistor one. We have resistor three, resistor two, EMF two, and EMF one. The variables we know is our resistance one is 4.50 ohms, resistor two is 3.00 ohms, resistor three is 6.00 ohms, EMF one is 9.00 volts, and EMF two is 12.0 volts. Our goal is to figure out currents one, two, and three. We have yet to identify them, that's your job. So, we start with identifying Dorfstetter. Oh, the loop directions. Loop directions, okay. So, let's pick some loop directions. Now, when we did it last time, you guys basically just picked random loop directions. So, let's think our way through the loop directions as to what might be logical directions for loops. Let's start with, let's say we have a loop, I think, down here. Which direction would you like this loop to be and why? Um, Potterella, out of the board or into the board? Um, wait, 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 so talking about V1? The, the loop that's going to go through uh, EMF1, resistor 1, resistor 2, and EMF2. Okay. Um, out of the board. Out of the board. So he's picking out of the board. We'll call this loop A. Why did you pick out of the board? Okay, because EMF2 is greater than EMF1. I'll accept that. Sure, that seems like a logical choice. Let's do a second loop, which will be this loop all the way up here. Pick a loop direction out of the board or into the board. Tyler. Into the board. Into the board. Why? Because I'm still writing numbers and I don't have time to think about it. Okay, why into the board? What's a logical choice? Why is into the board a logical choice here? James? So it can pass through the battery in EMF2. So it could, uh, well, it even goes well, pass yeah, through from negative to positive. From negative to positive. It, generally, it makes most sense to have it go from negative to positive when you're going, having a loop direction. It doesn't have to. Clearly, we showed that when we picked our loops before. But um, <laughs> we could choose whatever we want. But this probably makes most sense. And loop C, we'll put around the outside. And again, I'll have it go from the negative to the positive of these plates. So we'll go around the, out, the outside there. And then we have junctions, we'll identify junction A, and we'll identify junction B. So, uh, let's walk through this one together, I don't know how much time we're going to have, so let's do uh, junction A, the current going in is going to be equal to the current going out. Uh, winter, current's going in, oh we have yet to identify current direction, let's do that, winter, she left us. Uh, let's, Never mind. Okay. Uh, Vlad, pick a current, pick a direction. Let's say the current through resistor one, up or down? Um, well, that's a lot. Okay. Uh, why did you pick up? Okay. Why up, Zach? Seems like the current would go that direction through that resistor. I can agree with that. Through resistor two, Matic, direction? Um, let's say to the right. To the right. Why to the right? Uh, negative charge goes towards the positive plate, maybe. But it's a positive. But maybe remember, positive. we're talking about conventional current, always. But that's not the real. Right, but whenever we draw arrows on here, it's always conventional current. All right, let's make it to the left. Okay. Right. I do understand that it's the negative charges that flow opposite the direction of the arrows that are drawing on the board, but let's not confuse ourselves by talking about that. Let's just pretend we have positive charge flowing in the direction of the arrows. This makes sense, I would agree, because we have EMF2, which seems to be pushing the current that way. At this point, the current through resistor 3, you would guess, Loki, would be? To the right. To the right, I think I would agree. It seems the most logical. If we're wrong, it doesn't really matter. Let's try this. Uh, De Silva, current going into junction A and out. Um, I1 plus, or current 1 plus current 2 equals current 3. Great. The potential difference around loop A is equal to zero. Loop A for me, please, Mohit. Hmm? Mo Mohit, loop A. Um, I would start with 
Yes. R1. Okay. And... So potential difference yeah. across resistor 1. And I think that's positive. Positive because? Because it's opposing the direction of the... Uh, of the current. Opposite yeah. direction of current. Keep going. And then you have uh, the E of 9. I'm calling it E1. Just okay, yeah. Um, since it's going from positive to negative, it's negative. Good. Keep going. And then after that you have... I guess I don't really know what to do with you. Okay, so we come back up to, now we're going through the bottom part of this loop, this branch, if you will, right there. Okay. So then you have uh, E2. EMF2. Yeah. Positive it's negative. Going from, it's positive. It's going from negative to positive. Good. And for the last one, you have negative delta VR2, because the I is going in the same direction. Good. Zero equals, I need current and resist, which current goes to resistor one, Meg. Um, uh, current one. Current one minus EMF one plus EMF two, which current goes to resistor two. Oh, yeah. Can you ask me? Yep. Mega. Current two. Current two. So it's still current two. Good. So zero equals, and we have current one. Resistance one was four point five minus EMF one, which is nine, plus EMF two, which is twelve, minus current two, which we're solving for, times resistance two, which is three. We need the potential difference across loop B, which is equal to zero, is going to be equal to, Bill, walk me through this one, please. Uh, yes, okay. So equal to zero, loop B. Yep. Um, all right, so you have the EMF uh, two, and that's going to be positive. And then you have the potential difference of <coughs> resistor two, and that's going to be negative, and then you have the potential difference of resistor 3, and that's going to be uh, negative. Negative. Good. Zero equals EMF 2 minus Megan did such a wonderful job the first time. What currents are going through resistors 2 and 3? Uh, 2 and 3. Okay, I just wasn't sure. You've got to be careful there. Okay, so we have zero equals EMF 2, which is 12, minus current 2, which we're solving for times resistance two, which is three, minus current three, which we're solving for, times resistance three, which is six. We now have our three equations and three unknowns. Sarah Jane Jones, what is our next step? Uh, write it in a matrix. Ah, we can't write it in the matrix just yet. Oh, we, we have to rearrange the equation. We have to rearrange the equation. So let's start with this first one. How do we rearrange this first one, Sarah Jane? Um. I, uh, zero equals I1 plus I2. Actually, the zero is on the far right. Okay. I1 plus I2 minus I3 equals zero. Okay. The next one. What is the next equation, please? Uh, John. Um, 4.5 I1 minus uh, 3, point, uh, 3 I2. Plus zero I three. It's always good to put the zeros in there. In general, it helps with going to the next matrix. Is equal to negative three. Negative three, right? Twelve minus nine is positive, but then we bring it over to the other side. Negative three. And the last one here. Um, yeah. So, uh, is there an I? No, there is zero I one minus three I two uh, uh, minus six I three. Equals negative 12. Equals negative 12. Does it work out to be negative 12? Yes, the 12 is on the other side. Uh, I will give you the answers just so you know. 0 0.154 amps up through R1 I, I2 equals 1.23 amps left through R2 and current 3 equals 1.38 amps to the right through R3. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for living with me today.